Hello, friends. It is so wonderful to be with you today and to look at God's Word and uh, evaluate it. Uh, well, today we're going to start a new series that's very fascinating. It, I'll tell you, it was to me, uh, you know, because whenever I start a sermon series, I learn a lot myself and discovery of God's Word, especially when you consider a specific subject and then you have to get out your concordance and you have to go through verse after verse. And, of course, look for the harmony of the gospel. Look for the harmony, the the uniform nature of God's word. And you will find it there, Genesis through Revelation. That's what we do today as we begin a prophetic series. Periodically, we're going to be looking at Bible prophecy. And this is that occasion. I'm always excited about Bible prophecy because it points to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today's subject will be, will the Antichrist be a Jew? Oh, oh, that hits hard. Uh, that's a controversial topic. Jerry Falwell had his hand slapped for saying uh, <laughs> on his uh, TV program and at his church that, yes, according to the Bible, the Antichrist would be a Jew. Arno Fros of Midnight Call Magazine says the Antichrist will be a Jew, and a number of others have said so, and these people certainly are not anti-Semitic whatsoever, but uh, what does the Bible say? You know, that's what I'm interested in, and I know you are too. One of the great mysteries, and yet revelations, yes, there are mysteries that have been revealed in the Bible, is the identification of the Antichrist. Now, I cannot tell you his name, although I do believe that Christians will know his name before the world knows it, that's for sure, because we will be able to identify and discern the name and the office of the Antichrist while the world will be totally deluded, coming under the strong delusion of Second Thessalonians chapter 2. But there are other ways to identify the Antichrist. We're going to be looking at that today. In fact, I believe this could be a uh, such an extremely important topic because Jesus wants you to know this. Listen to me very carefully <laughs> when what I say. Jesus wanted you to know. You see, in Matthew 24, he warned that in the last days, many would follow after a false Christ, a counterfeit Christ. Yes, the Antichrist. Some have said the Antichrist, the word anti, or the precedent anti, means to be against God. Some say it means to be a substitute for God. Well, of course, both of those things are true of the Antichrist. The Bible is full, chock full, of astounding information about the Antichrist. So that we being sober and full of the knowledge of Christ in the Bible, will know these amazing things. But the world, again, I want to repeat, will be deluded about this. But God, our Lord Jesus, wanted you to know and to be awake and to watch out. Let's start, if we will. And by the way, by the time we finish this hour today, Many of you will be in a state of absolute shock. Some of you will be frightened. Others will be so uh, so amazed, so uh, uh, taken with the Word of God and the revelations that I'm going to give to you today. You will exclaim, I have never heard such things, and yet they are in the Word of God. You will say, this is like nothing that I've ever been taught by the other prophecy teachers. And truly, that will be so. You may talk to your pastor and say, do you know what Tex Morris said? And he will tell you that was not what I was taught at my seminary, at my Bible college. You'll go to your Christian bookstore and you'll pack up and buy all of the books on prophecy that you can find. It won't be in there. You see, I have read all of those books too. But they mean nothing to me, absolutely nothing. Because the only thing that matters to Tex Mars, and I pray, my friend, to you, is the Word of God. And that's what we're going to be looking at. And there is where the mysteries are revealed. There in the Word of God, 
you will find things that will absolutely boggle your mind. And they should thrill your heart because you're going to gain knowledge that no one else has. And when you tell the world, they'll get mad at you. They'll scream at you. And listen, when you tell them what I am going to tell you today, believe me, they'll call you every name in the book. In fact, for the knowledge that I'm going to reveal today, if you reveal it to others, you might even be thrown in prison someday. Maybe you won't want to listen to what I have to say because I'm going to prove to you some things about the Antichrist that will be dangerous to you. Not spiritually, because God's knowledge is always uplifting and giving of liberty and freedom. For there is peace and no bondage in the Word of God. But there are those who would want to keep you in bondage. They want to keep you away, prevent the truth from coming into your mind and heart. Well, we're going to just put a stop to that today. And as much as God will allow this to go over on the uh, airwaves across this great planet, we will enlighten many other people to the truth of God's Word. We start with Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, where Paul cautions, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, that is the day of the coming of Christ Jesus, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Here we have a picture of the Antichrist. He is called by what he should be called because Paul was never a person to mince words. He is called the son of perdition. What is perdition? It is hell. It is the destiny of the devil and his dark angels, the pit of hell, the lake of fire. And this is the very son of the lake of fire. He is the man of sin, for he encapsulates within himself, within his own one body, all of the great sin of all of the earth, because it is in fact the Satan himself who will possess this man, the son of perdition. He will be, in a sense, the son of the devil, just as Jesus is the son of God. And all will believe on him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. They love not the light, whereby they could be saved, the Bible says. But they embraced the darkness, and they were sent a strong delusion by God. The Antichrist, my friend, will come first before Jesus. Now, a lot of people have lied about this. They've tried to misinterpret this every way they could. And they say to you, those things are not important. We'll be raptured out of here. Now, Tex Mars believes strongly in the rapture of the church. I read about it in Isaiah 26 and 27. I read about it in 1 Thessalonians. But you've got to know the timing and the sequence and the chronology of it. And the first thing you must understand is that that day, the day of our great redemption by Jesus and his lifting us up off this earth, Listen, that day will not come. Paul said, let no man deceive you by any means. And they are out there, the deceivers, the wolves, the false prophets. But Paul said, don't let them deceive you by any means. Well, my friends, are they deceiving you by a book, by a speech, by a sermon, by a letter, by the counsel of a false teacher, by a pastor who was falsely trained in the cemetery that I call the seminary? Paul said, don't let anybody deceive you. Let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. What does it say? Be revealed. What does it say? Be revealed. The son of perdition. And he will sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God, claiming I'm God. I should be worshipped above all the gods. He doesn't deny there are other gods, plural, he just says, I should be worshipped above them all. Paul said, don't let anybody deceive you. Let no man deceive you. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. What does it say? Be revealed. What does it say? Be revealed. 
the son of perdition. And he will sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God, claiming I'm God. I should be worshipped above all the gods. He doesn't deny there are other gods, plural. He just says I should be worshipped above them all. He exalts himself above all that is called God. Well, he's a pretty greedy fellow, obviously. No doubt about that. Full of greed. Here's what Habakkuk says about the Antichrist in chapter 2, verse 5. He says, he is a proud man. Now, there's nothing, my friends, wrong with pride. But there's a lot wrong with false pride. If you've got some accomplishments, it's okay to be prideful. But there is a great difference between being haughty, as the Bible says, and being prideful. Uh, prideful if you're prideful or haughty that's one thing it's okay to be proud but don't be too proud (laughs) don't think you're something that you're not don't exalt yourself because my friends surely you brought nothing with you in the world the bible says and you will take nothing out and you will go out exactly the way you came in and stand before all of us before the judgment seat of god some to salvation and some to damnation. So your pride will do nothing for you, but as the Bible says, pride goeth before a fall. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. Yes, all the world shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. And that's Revelation 13. Now, one of the most fascinating things about the Bible is the fact that it tells you what race, what nation the Antichrist shall come from. And many people don't understand this, and they're shocked when they find it. You know, Jerry Falwell gave a sermon in which he preached that the Antichrist would be a Jew. Oh, my goodness, the hounds of hell came against him. The Jewish ADL, the American Jewish Congress. Oh, he was lambasted left and right, and you know he had to apologize. He he said, I'm sorry, I was so insensitive. Falwell said, I still believe the Antichrist is going to be a Jew, but I shouldn't have said it publicly. I'm sorry. I apologize if I have offended. Well, that's the strangest thing you've ever heard. He he says, it's that's biblical what I taught you, but I'm sorry that I taught it. Well, I've never heard of such confusion. You see, here again, fear will be placed into you when you tell the truth. There are other people, of course. I once uh, I recently read in an issue of Midnight Call, Orno Frosa, who's about as strongly pro-Israel and pro-Jewish as they get as a prophecy teacher. Orno Frosa also teaches the Antichrist will be a Jew. Sir Winston Churchill once wrote a fascinating and, well, abiding article about the Jews. He he wrote it in a major London newspaper even before he became Prime Minister of Great Britain and became really the great hero of World War II in leading the people of England against the Nazi Empire. But Churchill mentioned that from the race of the Jews came the Lord of all, Jesus Christ. Yes, he did testify to Jesus. How how great a man came out of that nation of Israel, he said. And yet, he said, also out of this same stock of people came the most monstrous system on the face of the earth, communism. For you see, Lenin and Marx influenced by the Jewish Talmud and by the Jews. Lenin, of course, was married to a Jewess. His wife was Jew. And almost all of the leaders, the Bolsheviks that took over Russia, almost all of them were of Jewish blood. All the communists were. At the same time, Marx, who gave us the theory in his book, such as Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto, yes, Karl Marx was a Jew and a hater of God. So it was the Jews who gave us communism. And Winston Churchill marveled that it was the Jews that produced Jesus, the great lover of mankind, and at the same time, from that same race, produced communism, the hater and bloodletter. 
of our modern time as well. Now, you see, my friends, I believe there is a great lesson in all of this. I am convinced that from the Jews came our Savior. Yes, he is the lineage of David. He brings with him the promises of Abraham. Oh, my friends, it was of the Jews that salvation came. From God, of course, but bequeathed to the Jews. And thus we have the Jews to thank, and we should. It was from the Jews that we received the oracles of God, the Bible says, the prophets, and the Old and New Testament. And we are greatly, deeply grateful and thankful for that. Now, at the same time, the Messiah, of course, came from this lineage. So shall the Antichrist come from it. Wouldn't that make perfect symmetry? And by the way, the Bible says in Second Thessalonians, as I just read to you, that the Antichrist will go into the temple, a rebuilt temple, and declare that he's God. What kind of temple? That will be a Jewish temple. And, of course, the Jews would never follow a Messiah for the new age that was not Jewish. They're looking for a new David. Even today, when you travel to the land of Israel, there sometimes are banners and signs up talking about the coming of the great Messiah. Oh, they're looking for the Messiah. They've rejected Christ Jesus, the true Messiah. Now they're looking for another one who is to come. And friends, he will come. Well, we're going to look at proof today that the Antichrist will be a Jew. And here again, we see the true Messiah comes from the Jewish lineage. Of course, I realize that God overshadowed, the Holy Ghost overshadowed uh, Mary. And I realize that and that Jesus was not of Joseph's blood. But still, there is that lineage there that you can read about, for example, in chapter 1 of Matthew. The lineage of David, the root of Jesse. Well, but at the same time, Isn't it odd, isn't it unbelievable almost that the Antichrist will come from that same stock of people, that same nation and race? Well, it makes perfect sense when you understand how God works. You see, God will never exalt a people beyond measure. And here we have a case where God says that people will be both exalted and debased because God will not give his kingdom, will not share his glory with anyone, any race, because God is no respecter of persons. If we exalt the Jews because Jesus came from the lineage of David, what shall we say that the Antichrist comes from the Jews? Now, believe me, many today, even in the occult world, have the understanding and knowledge that the Antichrist will come from the Jewish race. There is an organization, a secret society, headquartered in France called the Priory of Zion. They believe that Jesus married, had several marriages, in fact, and that the blood lineage of Jesus himself exists. Of course, this is blasphemous, it's not true. But it shows you that they do believe that their coming Messiah will come from the lineage of David. Well, we're going to look very carefully, and I will prove to you without a doubt that the Antichrist will be a Jew. And you will understand why as we go along. Now, first of all, we begin with the book of Daniel. It talks about the Antichrist. It says that this great king of the last days shall... Work, now let me read to you, by the way, from Daniel chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. It says, He shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Small group of people. Some say, well, Tex, there are not that many Jews in all of the world. No one really knows the number of Jews that are alive today. We know, by the way, there are more Jews living in the United States than there are in the nation of Israel today. And I think, it, it again, very odd that we have all kind of appeals from people like Pat Boone and others pleading with us to give money so that Jews can be uh, transported. They will immigrate out of Russia and over into Israel. 
and yet no one talks about bringing airplane loads of Jews from the United States to Israel. Many people believe that all the Jews will return to Israel in the last days, but no one wants to be called an anti-Semite by inviting the Jews to leave America. And yet there are more Jews here in America than there are in any other nation of the world. And so if many are right in claiming that God requires all Jews to return to their homeland in the last days, why is no one exclaiming, let all the Jews leave America? That would be called racist and anti-Semitic. And yet, according to many Christians today, whether it's you know Jerry Falwell or Billy Graham and others, this is what they say. Well, it says here, very interesting, it talks about this Antichrist, come up with a small people. There is a small number of Jews as compared to other races and other nations today. But then that's what is prophesied to occur. A very small number of people, this Antichrist working deceitfully, shall come up. It says that he shall also forecast devices. That means he will use witchcraft and occultism. And certainly those in the Jewish religion today, in their worship almost of the Talmud rather than the Mosaic Law, and of the Kabbalah and the Zohar, all of the Jewish occultism that exists today. We see this forecasting of devices. Now, also in Daniel, in chapter 11, it says the king, that is the Antichrist, shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Well, isn't that what it said in Second Thessalonians 2? He'll go into the great temple of God and declare that he's a god and exalt himself. It says that in Daniel as well. It says he shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished for that is determined shall be done. In other words, he is going to speak horrible things against God, blaspheming God until the indignation is accomplished. It says in verse 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Oh, you see, Daniel is talking about Jehovah about the great I am, the God of his fathers. Oh, that's a reference to, uh, that's a reference to Israel, the God of Jacob, of Abraham. But this Antichrist king will not regard, in other words, he will not respect or give honor to the God of his fathers. No, he will not. Verse 38 says, but in his estate, that is in the place of the true God, Shall he honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not? Shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things? Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. God of forces. I've studied that term And I'm convinced of exactly what it means. It means not only the God of war, of death, of military forces, read Revelation 6, but also of the hidden occult realm. Because even in the New Age today, they talk about their worship of the God they simply call the force. Well, here again we have Daniel revealing the last day's Antichrist king will not worship the God of his fathers but instead will worship a strange God, the God of forces. So he will have to then obviously be a Jew, for he will not worship the God of his fathers, of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. But he declares himself as a God. You see, if you don't have another specific God to worship, but just simply the God of forces, that nebulous term, you can say then, I am the chief God. And he will indeed declare he is the chief God. And this will be in defiance of Jesus' truth in which our Lord stated, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But the Antichrist, the false Jewish Christ, will say, not so. You can be your own God, for there are many gods. But I am chief 
amongst them all. Jesus identified the Antichrist as a Jew. You want proof of that? Read John chapter 16, verse 23, wherein he told the Jews, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye shall receive. How much more clear can it be? Our Lord told the Jews, another will come in his own name. Him you will receive as Christ. Now we have today Jewish organizations exalting a strange God. Think about this. You see, the Antichrist will say, do as thou wilt. You are the lawmaker. The Bible says he will think to change times and laws. He will say, do as thou wilt. Now, this is the same thing that the head of the church of Satan here in America, Anton LaVey said, the same as the his, uh, let's just call him his founding father, Aleister Crowley of Great Britain, who called himself the Beast 666, another founder of Satanism for this century and of this even the new millennium because it continues on. No wonder the Antichrist is called the man of sin, the lawless one. Is there any reason then? Doesn't it make perfect sense that the ACLU, founded by Jews, run by Jews, operated by Jews today, the Jewish ADL, and such groups, Jewish run as Americans United for Separation of Church and State, all such groups, they're not only liberals, my friends, They are groups that say we do not want God mentioned in public life. We want no public prayers to Jesus. We want no manger scenes in front of city uh, courthouses or in city parks. We want no Ten Commandments posted in school. These people, my friends, are the ultimate lawbreakers because they are of their God a strange God of forces, and they wish not for the name of Jesus to be broadcast publicly in the land. I want to say, too, that one of their great leaders was Jezebel, one of the former queens. And the Bible says very clearly in Revelation chapter 2, verse 8, that the spirit of Jezebel will rise again in the last days. Notwithstanding, this is Revelation 2, verse 20, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest, that means allow, that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my children, to commit fornication. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, verse 22, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Friends, That Jewish spirit of Jezebel is in churches today, even in the reaches of the White House of the United States in Washington, D.C. No wonder our children are being killed with death, not only physical death, such as we've been seeing in Columbine and other places, Columbine High School. I'm talking about spiritual death because of the Jewish prophetess spirit of Jezebel. Now, Revelation 13, verses 5 and 6 says, The Antichrist will be given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies against God. Do the Jews speak blasphemies against God? You better believe it. Read the Jewish Talmud. Go to your library. See if you can get it. You might even have to go to synagogue. You will find. They say of Jesus that he was born of a whore. I even hate to say these kind of things on the air. In fact, I'm not going to say any more of what they say about our Lord Jesus. These books are the holy books, so-called, taught to rabbis in their seminaries. And they teach these things to others now today. Horrible things that they say about our Jesus. They say he's burning in hell today, for example. They blaspheme the Lord of all. And because of that, the spirit of Antichrist is upon this race. And we've got to pray for them. You know, the Bible reveals that throughout the 
early church, it was the Jews who stirred up the Romans and the others, and the, the Ephesians, the, the Greeks, everywhere that Paul went, it was the Jews that stirred up people to hate the Christians, to kill, to torture, to persecute Christians. Of course, Jesus cautioned us about this. He said, the time will come, quote, that whosoever killeth you will thinketh that he doeth God's service. And the Jews, in their zealotry, believed they were doing God's service. You'll remember that even the Apostle Paul, before he was converted to Christ, thought he was doing God a service. He was one of the zealots. He was glad to be killing the Christians, such as Stephen, for what he thought was their abomination. And yet, on that road to Damascus, that light came to him. And God's Spirit entered him and made him an apostle to the Gentiles. Well, my friends, throughout the centuries, Christians have been killed. Now, the Jews are not responsible for all of the deaths of the Christians. That is not so at all. We know about the great inquisitions of the Catholic Church, for example. But we do know that it was the Jews for uh, for, for many, many hundreds of years early on who so hated the Christians and saw it in every way they could to bring evil into the lives of the Christians. Now, one thing we need to know is this. Anyone who hates God so much, they will preach that Jesus was born to a whore and preach that Jesus is bawling in excrement in hell, and that's what the Jews teach in their Talmud, and say such horrible things of blasphemy against him has to be of the Antichrist. Now let me explain what it says in 1 John Chapter 4, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Oh, even in those early days, the Apostle John, all of the apostles were being greatly persecuted. Fiery times awaited every Christian, said Peter in the Bible. Because these people believed not that Jesus Christ had come in the flesh as God. And so they began to persecute the Christians who believe this. And John said, they are of the spirit of Antichrist. Chapter 5, verse 10, John says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Verse 12, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Oh, do you understand the significance here? Some say, well, the Jews can get to heaven if they obey the law. But there is none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. Let me tell you what the Bible says, not what you think. The Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Friends, if you have not Jesus, you are a walking dead man. Now, we're going to get into a study now of what city the Antichrist will come from. You may be surprised. A lot of people say it will be Rome. The Catholic Pope will be the Antichrist. Martin Luther, of course, taught that. And thus, the new Roman Empire will be where the Antichrist proceeds from and the capital of Rome, where sits the Vatican. That will be the seat where, uh, the, where, where Satan dwells. Let's see, though, what the Bible has to say about that. We're going to get into a, a study now of what city the Antichrist will come from. You may be surprised. A lot of people say it will be Rome. The Catholic Pope will be the Antichrist. Martin Luther, of course, taught that. And thus, the new Roman Empire 
will be where the Antichrist proceeds from and the capital of Rome where sits the Vatican. That will be the seat where, uh, where, where Satan dwells. Let's see, though, what the Bible has to say about that. You see, in Revelation 17, it talks about this great woman who sat on a scarlet-covered beast, having seven heads and ten horns full of names of blasphemy. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You see, John was absolutely surprised. He was shocked. He almost, I mean, you, you can almost admire evil for its unbelievable nature. Why was he so shocked? Why did he say, I wondered with great admiration? He was, it was, it was marvelous. It was incredible. It was, it was practically, it was stunning what he saw because John was given the identity. The angel said unto him, wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Now, first of all, we get right there. You see, in John's age, the book of Revelation was written about about uh, A.D. 95. Already, Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Romans, and uh, the temple had been broken down, every stone on top of another, just as Jesus had prophesied. And many, many thousands of, uh, of Jew, Jews were taken captive. In other words, the Romans says, good riddance to Jerusalem, the Jews, and to Israel. It is no more. John himself, of course, was banished to the Isle of Patmos. As an old man there, he was given this great vision by God of the things of the last days. And he saw this beast. Now look at the beast. It says, the beast thou sawest was. Now this was in the days of John. Now follow this very carefully. John is being told. Here is the situation in the world now. Consider this. Rome is the greatest empire on the face of the planet. Rome has destroyed Jerusalem. And here is what John is told. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. Well, now, if the beast is Rome, that would not match. Because it said, the beast thou sawest is not. But Rome was and is at the time of John and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Who is going to ascend out of the bottomless pit? The beast. But the beast did not exist in the day of John. That's very clear from Revelation 17, verse 8. The beast had existed, it was, but it did not exist during the day of John's revelation because it says it is not but it shall ascend. In other words, it was, was, and is not, but shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Now, who is that that comes up out of the bottomless pit? The beast. How can we identify this beast that comes up out of the bottomless pit? Well, my friends, Revelation tells us about this great beast that comes up out of the pit. For you see, in Revelation 9, it tells us that when the bottomless pit is opened, there will arise a smoke out of the pit. And out of the smoke will come great demon beast in the form of locust and uh, uh, other things. And they will torment the men and women and children of the earth. It says, verse 11, now these are the demons that come up out of the bottomless pit in the last days. The bottomless pit is opened and they ascend up out of the pit. Revelation chapter 9. It says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. Oh, my friends, there is a creature who is the king of of the devils from hell. Oh, this is another name. One more name. 
for the devil. His name, Abba Don. Now let me explain that to you. Abba in Hebrew means father. Don means one of great power, also known as Dan. For Don and Dan are in, are, are, are interchangeable names. Don, in fact, is a derivative of the name Dan. For it was Dan, head of one of the tribes of Israel, who demanded great respect from the people of his tribe. And so he began to be called Dan or Don. So, one of the names of Satan is Father Don or Father Dan. It's interesting to me that Many people have talked in ancient history that the lost tribe of Dan, the tribe of Dan, migrated over to Europe. And even the names of of places in Europe indicate that Dan traveled over into Europe. There is the Danube River. There is the nation today of Denmark or Denmark. You know, I went back and I studied the history of the Druids in England, and I found that they were called the children of Danan, Dan and Anne. Now, Anne was the great goddess of the Egyptians. She was the great mother goddess, the earth goddess. And supposedly, Dan and she became united as one. And so we have the children of Danan. And they sacrificed human beings to their great sun god there at Stonehenge. In pagan history, in occult history, we find that they would dance there at Stonehenge and have great uh, drunken orgies and revelings there at the time they sacrificed to the devil. And it was called the Dance of the Giants. Now, even the very word dance comes from Dan. The drunken revelings and dances come from the word Dan. Dan, dance. You'll know about that dance of the giants if you read Revelation, where it, or excuse me, Genesis, where it talks about there were giants in those days. And that was in the days of Noah. And uh, we could talk a lot about those giants and who they were. But many Bible scholars believe those giants, that identification was of dark angels who took to themselves beautiful women. And thus was God angered, and thus came the Noahic flood. In any case, we do know that the angel of the bottomless pit, the king over them, his name in the Hebrew tongue is Abba Don, or Abba Dan. Now, some people say, Tex, I don't understand. I understood that the the great city of Mystery Babylon would be Rome. You're saying it it is Jerusalem? Yes, it is Jerusalem. But isn't Rome the city that sits on seven hills, you ask? And doesn't Revelation chapter 17 mention that the seven heads of the beast are seven mountains upon which the woman sitteth? Yes, they are. Did you know that there are three cities... There are actually many, uh, the several more, but there are three key cities on earth that have seven mountains within their proximities. One city is Rome, yes, the city built on seven hills. Another city, a second city with seven hills or mountain ranges or mountains is Moscow in Russia. And get this, friends, a third city with seven mountains is the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, seven mountains. Now, verse 18 of chapter 17 of Revelation says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Here was the city that commits fornication with all the kings of the earth. The city known as Mystery Babylon, that great city. Let me read to you what Peter had to say. This is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13. He ends his letter 
in this way. He says, The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. You know, we can all agree that Peter was the head of the church at Jerusalem. You know what the early Christians called Jerusalem? Babylon. It was so evil. You see, there was Herod. He killed James, the brother of Jesus. Herod, of course, was the one that had his son and had Jesus himself crucified in that he cast Jesus back off to, to Pilate. And then Pilate, of course, gave it Jesus over uh, to the people's will rather than Barabbas to be crucified. But here was the wicked city. They had stoned the prophets. They had stoned many of the early Christians and did horrible deeds to them, such as young Stephen, the witness and evangelist who was stoned there at Jerusalem. They had taken in Peter and the others and taken them in and and and, and the the high court the sanhedrin had ordered them not to preach the name of the jesus uh, of jesus anymore and they had beat them to which peter replied i must obey god and not man oh yes peter and the apostles all knew that the wicked city was not rome but was jerusalem and so he said, the church that is at Babylon salutes you. He was saying, I'm at Babylon. This is the wicked city wherein, of course, our Lord was crucified. You say, do what, text? Yes, yes. You, you know, one of the things that you have to understand is that Babylon, that mighty city, will be destroyed in the last days. Revelation 18 says, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. It will fall twice. Well, how does that relate to Jerusalem? Do you not remember that Jerusalem fell just as Jesus prophesied 70 A.D. when Titus of Rome came in and demolished the city, took away the Jews captive? That was the first fall, but now in the last days, Jerusalem, regrettably, will fall again. Now, let's keep going. Did you know that Revelation 18 says of Mystery Babylon, that quote, in Reve this is verse 24, in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all them that were slain upon the earth. Now, this is the, the chief way, by the way, friends, if you really want to get down to it, if anybody says to you, surely, Jerusalem could not be, earthly Jerusalem, that is, could not be mystery Babylon. That's crazy. I've never heard of such a thing. Well, let's get to what the Bible has identified. Revelation 18, verse 24. And in her, that is, this great city, was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. What city could that be? Well, let's just listen to Jesus. Matthew twenty three thirty five. Here is an astonishing prophecy of Jesus. Jesus talking to the Jews, telling the Jews flat out what their destiny was. He said to them these words, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom he slew between the temple and the altar, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. And by the way, my friends, that word generation there means that race, that generation, that race. Just go to the, the Greek word there for generation, and you will find it means a race of people. All these things shall come upon the Jewish race, he's saying. The uh, uh, King James Bible as it generation, which is exactly right, and that means the generation. That means the people that were generated. That's how the, the, the English people spoke and used the word race at that time. It was generation. Jesus said, Upon you may come all the righteous blood upon the earth. He accused the Pharisees of killing the prophets that were sent to them. 
and the righteous men. What does it say in Revelation 18 of Mystery Babylon? And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Well, the same thing here. Jesus is saying that upon you may come all the righteous blood. How much? All the righteous blood. See, the Jews say we're not responsible for Jesus' death. And if we were, it was very indirect. We didn't do it. The Romans did. We cried out for the Romans to kill him. That's true. But they are the ones that did it. Goodness gracious, friends. In a conspiracy to murder somebody, all the conspirators are equally guilty. You know, Charles Manson didn't kill anybody. He didn't kill anybody. There's no proof whatsoever that Charles Manson killed anybody. But he was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. He's guilty, just as guilty as his disciples that went out and did the foul, dirty deeds. My friends, read Revelation 18, verse 24, and read Matthew 23, 35, and you cannot but come up with uh, only this explanation. Upon the Jews is the guilt for all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. That's what Jesus said. And in verse 24 of Revelation 18, it says, And her, Mystery Babylon, was found the blood of all that were slain upon the earth. Hey, same wording. There it is. No dispute whatsoever. That's the way it is, friends. You say, well, I, I thought that Jerusalem was going to be a wonderful city. I didn't know it would be the city, this horrible king, the Antichrist, who would worship the God of forces rather than the God of his fathers. I never knew that, that Jerusalem, I, I thought that was the holy city, friends. That city was holy until Jesus was slain on the cross. And don't you remember what happened? Oh, my friends, the ark left. Oh, the ark of the covenant was gone. And, and, and the veil of the temple was rent, and there was an earthquake. And God's Holy Spirit left. Now, they can build all the temples they want there now. They can build all the synagogues they want. They can be made of the most majestic uh, substances, wood, gold, metal, glass, it can look like 26,000 crystal cathedrals and 98 St. John the Divine cathedrals and 25 uh, uh, St. Peter's. It doesn't matter all combined. It doesn't matter. God will not reside there. And Jerusalem will be that most wicked city on earth in the last days. And I believe that's exactly where the Antichrist will dwell. What proof do I have? Revelation 11. Revelation 11 says that the two witnesses will be slain in that city. Their dead bodies, it says in verse 8, shall lie in the street of this great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You understand that, my friends? What city was our Lord crucified? Jerusalem. And what does God in His Holy Word, Revelation 11, verse 8, what does He call that city where our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem? Spiritually, He gave it a name. It's called Sodom and Egypt. The two worst names you could get. How would you like to be called Sodom? Egypt. Oh, my friends, but you have to understand that Jerusalem, the church of Jerusalem, is not even mentioned in the book of Revelation. Read chapter 1, verse 11. It talks about the seven churches. Jerusalem's not there. It's not there. Well, what about Jerusalem? Oh, my friends, read Revelation 21. There is the holy city. There is a new Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem, not the earthly, not the planetary, a heavenly Jerusalem. It's coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Oh, I love this. It says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God shall be with them and be their God. Verse 10 says, And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Oh, friends, don't get it into your mind that this earthly Jerusalem, this wicked Sodom and Egypt place where the Antichrist will be and dwell and come to power and not worship the God of his fathers and will blaspheme our Lord Jesus Christ as the Jews do today. My friends, please understand there's another, a greater city. Oh, yes, the code name is still Jerusalem, but it is the heavenly Jerusalem. Verse 22 says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. My friends, God himself is a temple. Do you understand that? 
The city had no need of the sun nor of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb was the light thereof. Friends, that's the ultimate, isn't it? Now, friends, what should we do of this knowledge? Yes, the Antichrist will be a Jew. Jesus said he would. Daniel said he would. Revelation reveals that so. Paul said so in Second Thessalonians 2. He alluded to it at least. What are we to do about that knowledge? I believe we should pray. We should pray for the Jews. Oh, I believe many of them are going to suffer great tribulation in the last days. Oh, put hatred out of the way. Put dislike. Put despising of Jews out of the way. Love these people. Reach as many as we can in these last days before it's too late. But never, never let anybody call you an anti-Semite for telling the truth. Because God's Word is truth. Well, this has been Tex Mars. We've been talking about the Antichrist. Will he be a Jew? Yes, he will. Jesus came from the Jews. The Bible did, but so will the Antichrist. But remember, my friends, God shall be victorious over all. And I pray that you will be a citizen of the coming New Jerusalem.